Hi there, Jessica with Paver here. We have had several new updates and feature releases, so I just wanted to quickly record a video showing you all the new things that you may or may not have noticed yet to make sure that you can use all of these new features to benefit yourself and your business. So today we're gonna to go over our new report types along with the new features that you might find inside of those different report types. Let's go ahead and get started. So one thing you may have noticed is that the report type page has changed. So when you navigate to uh, create a report, you'll see that you have these new icons here for the different types of reports we now offer. We're gonna start with the analytics report, which is the same report as our old standard report. So if we click on analytics, the first thing that I wanna point out, and this will be available on all of the report types, is down here at the bottom where it says your recent reports. If you expand that, you'll be able to see a list of your most recent reports, and you can click into those to open them in Google Sheets. This should just save you a little bit of time so you don't have to go back into your drive and search for those recent reports. Um, so this report page works just like the old one does where you just select your calendar that you wanna create a report from, put the start date and end date in there, create the report, and then of course you'll be able to open that report inside of Google Sheets. So just a few things that I wanna point out to you on this new report type. So the first thing you'll see that might be different is these filtering options across the top here. So what this is gonna allow you to do is click into it and then you can select the categories or labels that you want to view and this if you select those it is going to give you just the ones that you select um, so this is going to help you just kind of drill down into um, these analytics a little bit more so that you can um, see all this data without having to create multiple report types so you can do that filtering for categories for labels for calendar names. So this report only has one calendar on it, but if you're exporting multiple calendars, um, that's gonna be a really useful feature. And then you can also sort by um, the start date. So if you wanna run the date, or if you wanna run the report for the whole month, but you wanna just kind of look at a day or a week at a glance, you can do that as well. So that is the different filtering that is now available. And if we click over into the calendar entries tab, the next thing I wanna share with you is these calendar links. So you'll notice that these are hyperlinked now. And if you click on this, it's actually gonna take you back to that calendar event. So this is gonna be really helpful if, for example, you see that you have a calendar event that is uncategorized that should be categorized. So what you can do is you can go um, to this calendar event. So you just click on it. It's gonna open that calendar event. Um, so yes, it's going to open that calendar with the event. You can then launch Paver or use the shortcut to apply that updated um, that updated category. And once you save that, you can actually come back over into the report. And this is a feature that's new as well. So you should notice that you now have your Paver icon over on the sidebar and you can refresh the data. So if you go back to the calendar and change anything on that calendar event um, for the date range that you've created this report type for, you can then refresh this data without having to run a new report. So those are gonna be the most helpful new features on the new analytics report type. The next new report type I wanna show you is our timesheet report. So with a timesheet report, you get just a really simple report that you can turn in. Um, if you are someone who needs to turn a timesheet in, or if you have employees who need to turn a timesheet in. So when you select the timesheet builder, again, you'll be entered to, uh, you'll be prompted to select the calendar you wanna create the timesheet from, put your start date, end date in, and then you can select the categories that you would like to create that timesheet from. So if you want them all to be on there, you can select all of them. If you only want some of them to be on there, you can do that as well. And then again, you'll have recent reports down here. And when you create your timesheet, it's going to look like this. So it will have just a really simplified version of the time that was reported on the calendar. And then as always, you also have the calendar entries tab here. So you know exactly where that data is coming from. If you need to change or update anything, again, you can go back to the calendar entry and update that and then refresh your data here so that you don't have to run a new report. And that is the new timesheet report. 
Okay, the third report type we're going to look at is the agenda report. So this agenda report is really nice if you have just a really busy day or a really busy week and you just want kind of a snapshot view of what's going on. This works really great if you have like a daily run of show or if you're executing on an event or something like that and you just want a list of everything that's in your calendar day with the start date and the end time. So as always, select the calendar you want to create that agenda from, put your start date and end date in there, create agenda, and then it's going to create your agenda in Google Sheets and it's going to look like this. So what you'll see is this is going to be the calendar name. You can always click in here and change this, the time frame that you selected, and then you'll see here that it has the uh, date, the start time, the description, so whatever the calendar event description, or I'm sorry, the calendar event name is, is what the description is, and the duration, and if there's a location that's in there, it will also have the location. Um, so you can click in here, you can add additional notes or you can update any of the information from the calendar or the calendar entries tab. And this is just going to be really helpful if you've got just a really busy day or week and want to be able to quickly see what's going on. So that is the agenda report. The fourth report type that I want to show you, and I want to show you this, this next one before we go into invoice because that one's going to take a little bit more of our time today, but the next one is a spreadsheet only. So if you're not using categories and you're not using labels and you really just want a way to export your calendar events into just that simple spreadsheet view without having that dashboard breakdown that the analytics gives you, then we now have spreadsheet only. So you'll just select your calendar or calendars, put start date, end date, and then that is gonna give you just the calendar entries um, view on that spreadsheet. So you're not gonna get that dashboard with the breakdown of your categories and labels. You're not gonna get some of those details about like how many events and how many hours. If you just really need a simple way to export your calendar, this report type is going to be exactly what you're looking for. It's going to run quicker than the analytics one. And then obviously, now that it's in a spreadsheet, if you want to create your own pivot tables or charts, you can do that um, with this um, report type, which is the spreadsheet only report type. And the final report type that we're going to review today is the invoice report. So. When you click on invoice from the report builder, you are going to see this card on the add-on and I'm going to make a separate video all about invoicing, but so this is just a really quick overview. In the next video, we'll go over your invoice settings and um, other details that are just gonna make it a little bit easier for you to get started with this. But what you'll do is you'll select the calendar. Um, so I have a specific invoicing calendar that I'm using for this, as always, start date, End date, um, you'll put your customer's name that you're invoicing in here. Your terms uh, by default are net 30. You can update that to whatever you want. And then you will select um, the categories and or the labels that you want to create that invoice from. And then what you will receive is this invoice template. So you'll see that um, your company information comes over, your client's name that you input come over, invoice number, the time frame that you're billing for, invoice date, terms, and this is what it looks like when it comes over. So any notes that you put in the description field of the invoice will be pulled over into this notes section. There's a place for you to put your um, hourly rate into the um, invoice settings that again I'll go over in a different video which I will try to link up here so you can go to it if that's something that you want to see um, and the total amount due will be calculated so in the next video specifically about invoicing I will talk to you about setting this up and even how to um, take online payments from this invoice type. But I wanted to just very quickly go over all of these new features and report types with you so that you could have them and start to use them. And if you have any questions, please feel free to reach out to me. You should all have my email address, but if not, it's just jessica at getpaver.com. And I hope that you are finding these new reports and features beneficial to your business. And we would love to hear any uh, feedback that you have or any suggestions um, as most of these reports are just now coming out of beta. So we are still uh, welcoming any feedback or anything that would make it easier for you to use.